So you've decided that Eagle is probably going to fit your scrapbooking needs for organizing. Let me go ahead and show you how to get started with the library section. I'll show you how I do it and I'll explain my reasoning and then hopefully that will help you figure out what would work best for you in creating your libraries. So first off, I keep all of my stuff technically stored twice because I store it once on an external hard drive that's just my general backup as well as I have it once in an accessible place that I use it more frequently. That used to be just folders on a different hard drive. It is now in Eagle. That's my other storage spot because Eagle does duplicate the files. It does not just use the files that are already in that spot. I do like that. I didn't think I would, but I have my reasons for that, that I do like it. For my general storage, I tend to keep things very specifically. Mostly it is by stores. Like I have Pixels and Company. I have Snap Click Supply. I have um, SSD Sweet Shop Designs. I have things from Studio Calico that I've picked up that are digital. Occasionally I have a designer that I either have a whole lot of their stuff, but they don't really have a store. Some of this could be organized better and I have not done that yet. Forgive me for that. But because I like to organize it this way, I find it easiest for my personal libraries. I have one that's the lily pad. That's because that's where I do a lot of my creative work. So I get a lot of supplies from there. And then I also have, I will actually show you. So I have the lily pad as one of my libraries. I have one called other designers and that's where I will put in all of my other designers at other stores, such as sweet shop designs. That's where all of my Kristen Conan Barrow stuff is, ginger scraps. And in here, I do try to keep it very organized because I'm trying to do better than I do on my hard drive. Someday I might have time and go through my hard drive. Not today. Um, I do have things from where Anna Aspen set a store, Becky Higgins, I have some things from there. These are all in my other designers. This is also where my other stores are, such as Sweet Shop and Pixels and Company. I have some designers that I only have one or two things for. They're in my no store designers. It, maybe I've lost track of where they've gone, or I, maybe somebody that I just don't necessarily associate with a specific store. Um, I've had that problem a lot with Snap Click Supply. I have a couple designers who've gone there, like Down This Road Designs is there now, and Meredith Cardell is there now, and I don't always think to remember that that's where they are. So by putting them in no store designers, I do know where to go and find them. My other libraries, I have one called Retired Designers. There are a couple of designers. I absolutely love their things, but I have a really hard time using them when I'm doing challenges for store specific because they are retired. Now, um, Kate Hadfield is actually not retired. I can move her over to the other one. Again, that's just something I haven't, but I'll, let me go ahead and show you how you do that. So for Kate Hatfield, what you do if you want to move an entire folder over to the other library, you go down here to add to other library, and I'm going to add her to my other designers. So I'll click that. It's going to give me a warning. Hey, that's a whole lot of things. Are you cool with that? Yeah, actually, I am okay with that. Now, this is one of the things I appreciate about Eagle. It will move all that stuff for me, and it's actually copying it. So now when I go over to the other folder, it will all be there, or the other library, it will all be there. However, it has not changed anything on my hard drive. So wherever I have my Cat Hatfield folder there, or Kate Hatfield folder there, it is still there. And that is okay with me because if something corrupts, I don't have to worry about it. I have my other backup. Gina Miller is actually also back to scrapbooking, so I can move her stuff. She's actually back over at the lily pad, so I can move her over to the lily pad, and I'll do some of that later. But this is where a lot of my different designers that have retired, and you'll see some of them. I have a whole lot of their stuff. Um, Jackie Larson, I have a ton of her stuff. And Dawn Inskip, I have a whole lot of her stuff. So I like having those separated when I'm just doing pages for straight fun and I'm not worried about them being in a store. This is, I know I can go to retired designers and not worry about it. Classes is something new to me that I started and I did that just to try and keep track of all the different classes that I had and the different pieces that went with classes. And then I also have one called finished layouts. This is a newer one for me, but I thought what better way to be able to look and see what I have in my different layouts than to have one that's actually finished layouts 
because then I can browse through them a whole lot easier and I can tag them and I can pull them up really easy. For this particular one, I have not tagged a lot yet here, but you can see I was working on tagging up some different trips that we've done. So I can tag them, I can pull them and go, oh, okay, that's what I have done so far. I also plan on being able to tag them when I've printed them. Like I know that this layout is printed in a book, so I can just simply add a little tag printed and I'll be able to pull really easily what is printed, what is pr what is not printed without having to try too hard. So I really love that. So that is how I organize my libraries. You do not need to have that many libraries. Whatever works for you that's going to be the easiest is going to be how you want to do your libraries. So to create a library, you'll simply go in, you'll hit create library. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create one called Paper Scrappers, just because this will be fun. Then it's gonna say, where do I want to create the library? So for me, I actually have a hard drive. I built my computer, so it has a whole lot of different little hard drives. So I have one that's actually called Photo Scrap, and that's where I keep all of my photos and all of my supplies on. And you can see that here's actually my other libraries that I have, that's what these files are. So I will go ahead, I'm gonna create it right here, and it's gonna go, okay, let me go ahead and start it. Now I import. So you can import folders, you can install extensions. I have not played with the extensions yet. For me to import the folders, I just go up here and I go add. Import from folder, and then we're gonna go back to that digi folder I was showing you earlier. And we'll go over here to, um, you know what, let's pull in Nellie and Clem. That is a paper scrapper that I got a few things from. Because I picked the highest category, it's going to take a few minutes to pull all of the things. But you can see it thinking at the bottom, and it will actually tell you how many folders it's getting. And it also will count down about how much time it thinks it will take. It's not always 100% accurate, but it does work hard to try and get all of those things together. So it will take a few minutes. If you are pulling a really big folder, think of somebody you've been buying a ton of stuff from that has really huge kits, then you're gonna have, it'll come up and it'll warn you, it'll be like, ah, this might take too long. And at that point, I might recommend that you split it up into a couple of different things, have it pull in a little bit slower, have it pull in a couple folders at a time. It just depends on what you wanna do and how long you can leave your computer just thinking and pulling files. So this is a cool feature that it has. It says, hey, you already have this folder in here. Did you really want to pull it in here, or this file? Do you really want to pull it twice? So I can look and I can compare it right here. It looks like this one is in a folder called Nelly and Clem, which it's in, that means it's in the main folder, but it also happens to be inside what you're watching. I find this happens occasionally with a collab I might have it happen where I've filed it in two different spots or if there's something that was part of a freebie so I have it in a blog hop but then maybe I also purchased it later or occasionally you'll have a designer who had a freebie kit and then they've gone in and they've added a lot more to it. That also I will have show up and it'll be like, hey, you already have this. Do I need this one a second time? No. And it'll tell you right here how many you have. So this particular one is in both What You Watchin' as well as December Movies. So this particular card she made in both, she put it in both. You know what, I'm okay with it being in there twice, so you can keep that twice. And this one, it's the a similar thing. It happens to be in the Chaotic Vibes Only Kit as well as, oh, it's, sorry, let me rephrase that. It's named two different ways. It's named DC2 as well as Die Cuts 2. I don't need that one twice. This one, I have the same thing, DC1, die cuts one. I don't need that twice. So I'll just say, nope, I'm good. And then now I have show so subfolder contents on. So that's why this view looks like this. It shows me at the top all the different folders. And then down below, it shows me all of the different pieces that go with it. And this is actually showing me all of the items through all of the folders, which is actually a really nice feature and something that I really enjoy. A little harder with designers who have a whole lot of things that I own, but really easy with designers that don't have as much. 
Now, let's say I decide, you know what, I've played around with libraries. This particular library doesn't work for me, so I think I'm going to get rid of this library. So what you can do is go ahead and you can switch libraries. So I'm going to switch back over to my LilyPad library, and it will take a moment to load depending on how many things you have in your library. This library, you can see the LilyPad folder itself has almost 400,000 things in it. Or sorry, the LilyPad library has almost 400,000 things in it, so it does take it a second to load, but it still loads really pretty quick if you noticed. And then up here, if I decide, you know what, I don't really want that paper scrapping library. So I'm gonna click on the libraries here. I can click right here. I can change the icon, I can remove the icon, I can open it in Explorer, or I can remove from the list. If I open it in Explorer, what it's going to do is it's going to show me exactly where on my computer that library is being stored. So I can come in here, I can just go ahead and say, I'll just delete that. So I just use the delete, deleted that. Well, now that library is nowhere, no longer here. If I try to switch it, it's gonna come up and say, oh, hey, this is missing. So do you wanna retry? Do you wanna make a new library? Or do you wanna go somewhere else? Let's go ahead and go somewhere else. So we're gonna go back to LilyPad, just because it tends to be my default library. And then I'm gonna go up here to uh, the li LilyPad to get to my libraries again, I just clicked on LilyPad. I'm gonna go, yep, that's right, I deleted that one. So go ahead and remove it from the list. So now I'm back to those original five libraries that I have going on. And that is how you get started, and that is how you pull everything in. Now, we talked, I mentioned earlier that I actually like that Eagle duplicates things into it. One of the reasons that I have found is because when I let Eagle move things, I don't worry about it as much because it's only moving the folders, the files that it has. So if it moves something to a different library, that's totally cool. I don't have to worry about where it ends up. If something corrupts, it's very easy for me to go back to my originals that I also have stored on a separate hard drive and pull them in. I've also used it for templates because there are some times when I start doing a template and the next thing I know, I save over the template. If I pull the template from Eagle and start with it from here, so I go in and I go, I'm gonna use this temple and template and I grab this template and I pull it into Photoshop and then I forget and I save without having to change the name. When I go in here, it's gonna show me that one with my layout, but I can go back to my originals that are stored separately and just re-pull it in, just that particular template It'll update and now that template's all back to being blank and I don't have to worry about any changes I made because I do still have a copy of the original. So I do like that. Those are the two main reasons is knowing that I have an extra backup that I don't have to worry about. Also, if I decide to move things around inside my Eagle library, I don't have to worry about it changing my other library around at all. I don't have to worry about it making my other stuff unorganized. I can organize it however I want. And because it's not reading from there, if I go in and get that hard drive super organized, like I now realize I really need to do, I don't have to worry if I move things around in here that Eagle's not gonna find those files because I didn't tell it. That could be obnoxious if it means you have to organize things twice, but at the same time, it's kind of nice because I don't know if you've ever used Lightroom or moved something in Lightroom and all of a sudden Lightroom's like, oh, don't know where that file went, can't find it. It is so frustrating to realize, crap, I moved something outside of that program. I've had that issue with other programs that I've used, so I really like being able to have it all together and in one spot. But that is how you get started with Eagle. Let me know if there's any questions you have or anything that I can show you how to do. Have a good day.